Hi folks, we're here today at Super Bowl in Makati Cinema Square and we're going to be meeting today someone very, very special. He is recognized worldwide as the greatest amateur bowler in history and he's Filipino. So stick around, we're going to have an interesting conversation. Hi folks, I'd like to introduce you to Paing Nepo Luceno. Hello. And this guy, believe it or not, is recognized worldwide as the greatest amateur bowler of all time. And when I first heard that, I said, oh, <laughs> can't be. So I went online and did some searching around, and it's true. I mean, this guy is recognized worldwide as the very greatest of all time. Wow. <laughs> now, I have to ask you, how in the world did you get into bowling in the first place? You know, Tom, I got into bowling by accident. We were <laughs> up in Baguio, okay. up Chan Hay. This was in the 1970, and oh. um, my dad, my brother, and myself were playing golf, a round of golf, and it started to rain hard. We looked for shelter and it turned out to be a bowling center. <laughs> it was um, the Mile High Bowling Center. Okay. Kam Chan He was an air base wherein the Americans go right. and for recreation. And they had a bowling center, a golf course among others. So that's how I got into bowling, through accident. By Absolutely. Accident. You know, almost everybody I've talked to has gotten into their passion by accident. I mean, that's, yeah. you know. Uh, we looked for a shelter, it turned out to be a bowling center. Yeah. So if not for the rain, I would have not um, discovered bowling. Yeah. Well, how did it hook you? Well, my... Dad enrolled me in a junior league, okay. uh, Coronado Lanes. I liked bowling then because um, when I was involved, I played with older people. Yeah. And bowling at that time had a junior league, which met every Saturdays. And I liked it because I was playing with my age group for right. change. So that's how I got hooked into bowling. Okay. And then my dad... Um, started reading books about it and he coached me all throughout my career. Oh wow. Was he a, a bowler or we more a mentor? We started at the same time oh, and okay. after a while he gave up and dedicated his time to me and studied okay. the sport. Okay. Well that's intriguing. The Now going into it as a league and this, that and other is, you know, it's fun, you're with your friends. But something must have happened along the way where you said, I want to be good at it. Uh, for a while, I was combining golf and bowling. I started playing golf at 10 years old, bowling at 12. I noticed that I became a better bowler than a golfer. Ah, okay. I started winning youth championships in a couple of months after I started bowling. Whereas in golf, I hardly won anything. Mm -hmm. When I started winning and became the best among the youth, um, that's when I wanted to become the best in the Philippines among uh, various bowlers, even among adults. Yeah. So I took my goal setting step by step at a time. So okay. when I became the national youth champion two years after I took up the sport. Um, that was at age 14 then? Turning point wherein I wanted to be serious, serious of it. Wow. My goodness. And uh, did you find some mentors along the way that... Uh, it was my father all throughout. Yeah. He was self-taught. He bought books about bowling and he was a pretty good coach. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So 
Uh, here you are, national champion, as a uh, 14 or 15 year old. Okay. And uh, and then, uh, how do you set your next goal? My next goal was to become the best in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, was there much action in bowling at that time? To be a national uh, um, champion. I was able to... Oh yes, we, we had... The Philippines held a big international bowling tournament annually. It mm -hmm. was called the Philippine International Open. And that was my goal to win it someday. And uh -huh. I was able to do it at 17, youngest ever, to win the Philippine International Open. And that record stands uh, firm up to this day and okay. broken. And so then, after that, there have come a string of international after championships. That, um, I wanted to become an international champion. At 19, uh, I was part of the Philippine team that competed in the Asian Championships, and okay. I won the Masters event, which is the main event, and I won it at 19. And when I was 19, I achieved the never-before-achieved Grand Slam. I won the Philippine Open again for yeah. the second time, and then I became Asian champion. And then I got to represent the Philippines in the Bowling World Cup, which is the Olympics of Bowling, where in more than 100 countries participate wow. annually. Okay. It's in sports, the Bowling World Cup is regarded as the most participating countries in a tournament. There's about 100 countries that join it. I didn't annually. know that. That's fascinating. Yeah. So I won that uh, 19. Yeah. Asian champion, Philippine champion, world champion, all in one year. And yeah. I established a Guinness Book of World Record, which is still unbroken. Yeah. Youngest world champion at 19. Yeah. So this was in 1976. Yeah. Wow. And then you've kept at it. Uh, do do you have, still compete or not so much? Uh, these days I compete on my own. Yeah. Um, not as serious as before, and I'm also the head coach of the Philippine bowling men's and women's oh, team. Okay. So it's time my time of giving back. So um, yeah. Well, you know the Philippine team. <coughs> yeah. Uh, someone told me that you. Uh, have come to a point where you're dedicating yourself to helping people learn how to become a champion. Is that a proper... Well, I like to teach, so it's my way of giving back. Um, I want to help the youth, and especially in bowling. Yeah. On Mondays, I teach at the University of the Philippines. And I go all the way. Crescent City to teach and bowling. Uh, I teach three classes. Okay. Aside from my coaching job as head coach. Okay. And uh, so I presume you're you're teaching bowling technique, but you're probably teaching more than that. Oh, I also certify coaches for the United States Bowling Congress. Oh my goodness! Anyone who wants to take up coaching as their livelihood, yeah. I do certification courses for the United States. My These goodness. are for countries outside the United States. Okay. So these days, coaches don't have to travel all the way to the States. Mm -hmm. um, to become a certified coach. I hold certification courses in various countries. My goodness, yeah. Now, uh, what I want to know, from your perspective and experience, what does it take to be a champion? Nobody is born to be a champion. Uh, it takes discipline. Discipline is the number one foundation for every winning athlete. And when I talk about discipline, it's self-sacrifice. It's the type of sacrifice that comes from within. It's not because your father or mother tells you to be disciplined or work hard at it. It should come from within and um, self-sacrifice. 
that's the first ingredient to be a world champion. Mm -hmm. You have to sac make, be willing to make sacrifices, train hours and hours until you perfect your technique. Second is um, determination. Without determination, you will not become a champion. Mm -hmm. And third, of course, patience. You need a lot of patience because obstacles come your way and it's not always rosy out there. Yeah. So it takes a lot of patience to be a champion. So yeah. those three are the, I, I should say, main ingredients to become a world champion or okay. to be a champion athlete in any sport. And then when you are coaching, can you identify you know the young people that have those qualities. I mean, uh, I can identify, yes. Yeah. But uh, they have to help themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to make time for it, make sacrifices. Yeah. So, uh, who is the youngest good bowler in the Philippines right we, now? We have a national pool right now, filthy national pool. Our youngest is 14 okay. and the oldest is about 40. So okay. we have a mix of veterans and youth in our national team. Okay. Both men and women. Oh. Okay. We are focusing on, on having more youth in the squad. Now, uh, I've been aware that there are a fair number of bowling alleys around town. Now here we are. This is your bowling alley? Um, this is a this is Super Bowl. Okay. It's owned by um, AMF Puya. Oh, okay. Yes. So in the Puya. I have my own bowling centers. They are Paeng's Midtown Bowl at Malate. Oh, okay. Paeng's Imus Bowl, Freedom Bowl at Imus Cavite. Yeah. And uh, I have one in Eastwood, Paeng Eastwood Bowl. Well, it's fascinating me how uh, even when I first moved here, uh, I actually used to, to go out and take, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, local friends bowling. Uh, because it, not only is it a sport, it's a great social activity. Uh, bowling is nice. It's, yeah. You can play it rain or shine, and yeah. it's a sport wherein height is not a factor. Yeah. It's mostly skill and eye and hand coordination. So it's good, it's good for Filipinos. Okay. Well, <clears throat> it certainly must be because you're the greatest in the world. <laughs> and uh, I, I just have to take my hat off to you for amazing accomplishments. Thank you. And setting standards for other people to look up to. So, I really appreciate the opportunity to sit down and chat with you. My pleasure. Okay, thank you More very power. much. More power. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank and you. folks, go out bowling. It's fun. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. And thank you very much. And before you sign off, up in the left-hand corner, you'll see a little circle with our logo. And click on that and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see other conversations with interesting people doing interesting things in interesting places. So thank you very much.